In our work, we do a lot of theater design, and in every single instance, there are wireless units used for theater. And virtually all of them are headsets because using hair mics or lavaliers or other things is very complicated for people who are not really good sound people. And this is really not Broadway. We're usually dealing with high schools, elementary schools, colleges, and they need something that's reliably high gain. Now, when you have an element this close to your, your mouth, it's extremely high gain, and that's what you want for gain before feedback when you're doing a professional show. Even on Broadway these days, these are common. Um, they hide them better than the one I'm using. I'm using one that's black, which kind of sticks out of my face. I could be using a flesh-colored one, but right now I'm not. This particular unit we're listening to is a Countryman W5 of their E6 series. It's one of the higher output units. Now, one of the things with any of these, and this you probably can't see this, maybe you can see that, is the sensitivity has to get changed on the body pack depending on what type of headset you're using. Now, we've found that the W5 is the best option for most of our work. It's high enough output that the belt pack does not get significantly noisy, but it's also not overloading with most of the voices we're dealing with. And of course, if you need an, an overload shift, you can shift the microphone itself to another position and get 6 dB or 10 dB of attenuation just by where you put the mic. Now, the thing with the Countryman is it sounds great. It's kind of the standard of the industry. It's got a really nice thin cable on it, which is good for dressing through your clothing, doesn't get stuck on anything, it's got a nice slippery jacket, and they're pretty reliable until you put them in the hands of, I don't know, elementary and high school students who tend to break them all the time. Now, even this cable here, if this breaks, this is a $75 to $79 cable replacement, which is a fair amount of money. Oh my God. I am never gonna financially recover from this. And then if bending this stock to set it up on people or other things that can happen to it can break the microphone itself, it takes a lot to do it, but we find an awful lot of schools where they'll break six of these in the course of a year. Most of these schools have anywhere from 12 to 24 units. So breaking six is a big deal, $3,000, you know, for uh, damages in the course of a year. So we've been hunting for quite a while for alternatives. And we found one that we really liked. Um, it's not quite as perfect as the Countryman physically, but the audio performance is extremely good. And it's called an AVL, nothing to do with us, Jeffy 630. It's available on Amazon, oddly enough. Well, everything's available on Amazon. Gore! So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to the AVL Hefe, which is going to require changing the settings on this body pack. I'm also going to have to take off my headphones so I can actually physically do this change. So let me uh, just mute this. Three hours later. So the microphone that I'm wearing now is the AVL Hefe. Now, all of the things you're listening to are non-equalized, not gated, no compression. So you're just dealing with the sounds of the microphones. Now I changed the gain on this down almost 10 dB because it's that much more sensitive than the Countryman even. So in the case of theater use uh, with background noise from body packs, that's actually a good thing that it's a high output. Now, the one thing I'll have to point out is you'll notice this is a little bit more noticeable and we'll get some close-ups of these things when we're all done here. The element itself is slightly larger. The cable is slightly larger, but still nice and thin, nice and flexible, nice, nice jacket on it. And Everything about it, you know, the, the connector is a cheaper molded connector. Now, would this be a good gift for somebody? Would this be something you'd buy for yourself? Definitely, definitely. Really? Before I leave here, I'll get one. But this is 79 bucks. So when this breaks, whether it's the cable or the headset, the cable's not detachable, which on the countryman it is. When this breaks, though, it's a $79 replacement, not a $79 cable replacement. 
So we're finding that everywhere we've been using these, in the high school market, the uh, elementary school markets, people are thrilled with them. And they fit well, they tend to stay in your ear pretty well, very, very similar to the Countryman. So we were looking at this and we were thinking, this is really good. And then the other day I was on a website, I probably shouldn't mention the manufacturer, but I will, what the heck, b &H Photo. They had a deal going on something that was kind of shocking. It was an element that looks an awful lot like this. It looks almost identical, except for some changes in the physical element itself. And it's a headset, and it's got a Sennheiser plug on it, and it was $9.99. So I said, for that kind of money, I gotta find out. So I ordered one, so let's listen to that. So anyway, it showed up and I put it on and I'll get it as much in the same position as I can. It's always hard to get these things to line up exactly because of the ear tracking and all of that. But anyway, I get this $9 microphone and it seems like there's a little bit more background noise on this mic than there was on the other one. Uh, the gain structure is slightly different. I'm going to kick it up just a touch, but for nine bucks, nine bucks so i went back to the website you gotta lower the, the output because this is actually 3 db hotter than the other one i was using so i'm looking at this thing i'm like nine dollars i mean this is literally a throwaway microphone it's just you break it you toss it the 79 dollar one you break it, you kind of might try to fix it if you can. The $400, $500 microphone, you absolutely want to do something to it and good luck fixing one. And I'm not taking anything away from Countryman and I'm sure, and I got to do this demo, I got to get somebody down here who's a singer and do a high level, you know, harmonic distortion kind of thing. I don't sing, you don't want me to sing, it would be bad. Uh, but listening to this, hey, 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 and listening to all of the things. Now, I probably just overloaded the USB recording, which is not the fault of the microphone. But I'm not overloading the body pack. I'm not hearing any distortions. And this sounds virtually identical to the other microphones that we're looking at. Now, the next thing we're going to have to do is do some physical comparisons so you can look at those things. But when you talk about 10 bucks, does it even really matter? This is uh, as cheap as coffee at Starbucks. I didn't even finish my coffee yet. <laughs> so I could go get a latte or I could get a headset for my wireless system. And this probably better spent money on the headset than the, the latte because it's gone when you're done. So looking at, let's just say I have a venue and I have performances. And when I want to go do my performances, maybe I want the Countrymans. Maybe I, I buy a bunch of them and I like them because they're teeny tiny. They disappear a little better and they have some sonic improvements, maybe. I'm not sure. I haven't gotten that far with this. But for rehearsals, you use these. All you got to know is the gain difference between the Countryman and this. Because EQ-wise, there's almost nothing different that you have to do with these. Now, the Countryman does have a bunch of other fancy things like little EQ caps you can put on the microphones, but the console's got EQ, so you kind of got that covered. So anyway, after doing this whole thing, I'm at the point where the little bit of background noise increase with this microphone, if I could afford them, I would do the AVL Hefe's. But if I had these in an elementary school where the chances are they're going to get busted, I would give them 12 wirelesses with maybe 36 of these and they're set for a couple of years and they've got microphones to throw away, which is really not a bad thing. Now, the one thing is a little interesting with this mic. I'm going to take off these headsets just because they're in the way. The one thing I did find kind of interesting besides being tangled in this cable is that the Pulson, which is what this is, comes with a rubberized backing to it that is actually staying on my ear better than the Countryman or the AVL Hefe. Now the AVL Hefe and the Countryman have very similar, I'm going to bring these up here, they have very similar ear set pieces. 
this material here on both of these units. Oh, sorry, those are both countrymen. So I'm cheating now, that's not even fair. Let's get the right product. Okay, so here's the AVL Hefe. And here is the countryman. Very, very similar elements. You'll notice the, the material feels about the same. Well, you can't tell that because you're on a camera. You probably can't feel this at all. Who knows? Maybe we could end up sending sensory information through this video. We'll try that next. But anyway, this is a countryman that had been bent for somebody's ear. This is a hefe that has not been bent. Now, you'll notice a couple of differences between these. Um, the length is virtually identical. The element itself on the hefe is larger than the countryman. That's the one negative. And you'll also no notice the hefe has this little thing here, which is a drip shield. So if you sweat heavily in this, the moisture comes down, hits that, and falls off the mic. The countryman is more impervious to sweat and things of that nature than virtually anybody else. So that is one thing. If you got people who sweat a lot and you're worried about it, you could do that. But once again, this is a $79 microphone, and if the sweat gets on it, I don't know if that's a big deal. Now, the one I'm wearing, which I can't really talk and show you, so let me switch back to the countryman. And maybe we'll try to do this live. This will be fun. Check, 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 check. Okay, so now we can go back to doing live recording. So the AVL Hefe, I'm going to put my headphones back on because I want to hear myself. There we go. Okay. So this is the Polson. This is the $10 microphone. Molded plug works just fine. It's got a larger element, but it's identical in size to the AVL Hefe. Does not have the little drip shield. And I don't know if that means they don't care or for nine bucks it was too expensive to put it on. The other thing is a little weird is there's a flat section here on the bottom of the earpiece unit. And then they've added this kind of rubberized outer jacket to this down to the heat shrink of the element. Now, the weird thing with this is that this flat section and this rubberized material on the outside of this actually makes it stay on your ear better than the Countryman or the Hefe. So for nine bucks, I got a unit that doesn't move around as much, which especially on little kids is a big deal. Now, what I'm going to try to do over the next few weeks is I'm going to try to break this thing. I've noticed that, you know, the bendability of this whole part of the, the element is not nearly as flexible as the Countryman or the Hefe, both of which are very comparable. And I've had the Hefe that I'm using here for about two years now, and I haven't been able to break it yet. But I am going to play with this at some point and see if I can bust it. But anyway, this is an interesting entry um, into this market, and the Hefe is as well. So for people who are looking for value and throwability, this is definitely a real player because it's a good sounding microphone. And of course, it's from China, as is the Hefe. Uh, countryman, I don't think is. I think there's still a US manufacturer. Possibly, I don't know. They could be having their stuff made somewhere else. But this is a real interesting player and in the headset market, I think it's something people should definitely be looking at for a throwaway. And I don't know, there's really not a whole lot more to say because that's probably more than I should have said anyway. And then the next thing we're gonna be exploring in a future video is this entire issue of lavalier versus headset versus other ways of doing things. And just to kind of preface that, even though this is not the way I'm supposed to do this, if I were to decide I wanted to use this as a lavalier, I gotta crank the gain way up to get comparable gain. Because obviously if this thing's over here by the side of your mouth versus down here, there's issues. People who do hair miking, of course it's not fair with me because I don't have any hair. They put microphones up here on the hair. You get some uh, boundary effect, which is helpful, but it's still, compared to this, it's not even close. But we're gonna do some live demos with loudspeakers that will be coming next. In a future video, not this video, another one, another video down the road. Oh, <laughs>